Hello, everybody. It's Heather with the Leadership with Heart podcast, and uh, today I'm I'm feeling very uh, happy and thrilled to have Mickey Gates on, and I have her on. So I met Mickey a couple years ago when I was doing that TEDx on transforming adversity into opportunity, and she was on the leadership team over that particular TEDx, and uh, we've just been kind of following each other ever since, and uh, just I've been seeing how she is out in the world, and I just love you know everything she stands for. And then just recently, I um, applied for another TEDx, and it's a, now she's a, the the CEO or the executive leader for this particular one. And so uh, it ends up being just by happenstance that I was able to get on that one too. So it's just really cool to have her on because again, I know she's full of heart, just all heart. So welcome, Mickey. Thank you. That's such a nice introduction. Thank you. So where are you right now anyway in your leadership journey? Um, I'm, what's really interesting is I'm actually in two different places. So I'm a people and culture leader for Century Casino, which is basically all things HR generalist, but also supporting six different properties. So everything you can think of in terms of people and culture leadership down to things as simple as like processing benefits and handling unemployment and all of that. So really I'm kind of a one woman show when it comes to all of these things. Um, and then on the flip side, I'm the curator and organizer of TEDx Manitou Springs. I um, mean, a lot of people ask me, what does it mean to be a curator of, of a TEDx? What, is the, what does that even mean? It means that I'm the person that's lucky enough to bring everybody together, both the speakers and the volunteers and the attendees and the community. I'm the person that gets to curate all of that and bring everybody together to bring a really incredible thought-provoking event. Mm, I love this. I know people are over listening and be like, what? I want to be on a TEDx. And like, so <laughs> we're, gonna, we're probably end up going a little off course and we'll usually talk about and talking a little bit about that too. But just talking about you, you know, um, I always like to you know talk about different people's leadership style. And when it comes to HR, because you know, there's so many different departments and different folks that you touch, you know, you are a leader in your own right because people are looking to you for guidance. So caring leadership is showing concern and kindness for those you lead or that look to you for guidance. And so that expands out quite a bit, doesn't it? It really does expand out because it's like, you don't necessarily have to have a manager title to be someone who's looked to for guidance or even leadership, right? It could be an influencer. Right. Absolutely. And I think HR is a huge influencer in any organization. So, um, yeah, I, I'm just so glad you're here, though. So I'm, I'm curious, you know, where, because you are, have, you have natural, like kind of when you think about the natural leader, you really do have kind of natural leadership skills, but I'm curious to know where that drive to lead came from for you. You know, I have learned in my life that I um, am, am an achiever. You know, I've, I've did, done different things like disc profile and strength finders and things like that. And my number one is strategy and then my number two is achiever. And so at my core, what drives me is a sense of accomplishment. Um, what has evolved for me over the years is how I get that sense of accomplishment. So when I was younger, it was through completing tasks and getting recognition and appreciation. And now I've found that that sense of accomplishment is kind of flipped. So when I have had a day where I've supported others, where we've worked through a complex problem, where I've helped um, an employee or a colleague or whomever it might be through a difficult situation or helped them grow in their career, that's the sense of accomplishment I get now. And so that's really what drives me is feeling like I'm using my talent and my caring and my leadership skills to help other people be better for themselves and better for their community. And so it just creates this long lasting continual impact it's funny how that evolves over time isn't it just like maturity and yeah. um you know some of the the life challenges we've had we have and i know we both had them so you know just thinking about how that really changed the per changes a person as far as yeah. its level of focus right absolutely I, I am curious to know so what made you you know have your any any day job because before you were here you were somewhere else but mm -hmm. do that and then decide to go and do you know lead a be a leader in the TEDx world. What was it that made you want to do that? Yeah, so I think, like you mentioned, I've been a natural leader my whole life. And so I, I, when I first started working, I started working the day I turned 15. And um, once I got to the age that it was appropriate to be a leader, but like you said, I was an influencer even then. You know, I, I tried to act like as a role model. I came to work every day, I did my job. I kept a great attitude. And so it's been something that's been really natural for me. Um, so it just made sense as I evolved into leadership roles in my 20s um, that... I um, would continue to do so. And I actually have never looked back. It's kind of funny. It's just 
I'm a leader. That's who I am. Um, I've evolved in my leadership style. I've evolved. I've, I've worked very hard on becoming a better active listener and things like that. Mm. But at my core, I am that person that I just naturally, um, I'm a critical thinker and a problem solver. And so I think that piece really helps and that I can step in and really see the big picture and break things down. Mm. Um, moving from something like being an HR leader, people and culture leader to TEDx, sure you use the same skills but they're very different mm -hmm. and the reason that i'm doing both and that why it makes me so happy is that i'm finding this great balance from it mm -hmm. so days where i might feel like the work that i'm doing um in hr feels draining or exhausting or there's so much paperwork you know uh, last year i can't tell you how many unemployment claims i had to work through those things can feel a little bit less inspiring. So by creating this adventure for myself and working with people who want to improve the community and really are working at putting out the best of themselves gives me that balance I need. So then you would, I ask, some people will ask me, um, aren't you exhausted? Aren't you doing so much? But really I'm getting energy from what I'm doing at TEDx. And so it actually inspires me when I come back to work doing my nine to five job and my eight to five job, it inspires me of what is possible. So. Mm. Oh, I love that. And you're right. Because when you think about that whole idea of like ideas worth spreading, it's always, yeah. it is really kind of thinking outside the box and like big, big picture thinking and what's the unique and best way to get this idea across. So I can see how being in an environment like that, you're going to then be even more effective at work, trying to get initiatives to go through, particularly with all the change that takes place. And you're able to think outside of the box with that. That's like yep. brilliant, actually. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's been great for me. When I started um, working at, at where I work now um, as an HR leader, one of my executives asked me, like, are you sure you're going to be fulfilled? And so I thought about it and I thought, well, if I'm not, don't worry, I'll find things that keep me fulfilled. Like, don't worry, I'll take care of that myself. <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, I'm, I'm curious to know for those, for those who, um, that look to you for guidance, those that you lead, those you look for guidance, what would they say about your leadership style? How would they describe it, I guess? Um, they would say I'm a servant leader, first and foremost, that everything I do, every decision I make is thinking about how will this affect my people? How will this affect my team? Um, I'm also a results-driven leader, um, which some people think are opposites. People think if you're a servant leader, you can't be, drive people result, drive results, and it's actually the exact opposite. I found that by being an empathetic and caring leader who steps up and works right alongside my team when they need it, we actually drive results that much better because those team members want to work harder they step up when they're needed and they feel inspired and they know that i'll take care of them so yeah i'm a servant and results driving yeah, and i'm the same exact leader i told that's just why i said that like you resonate with me so much and just how you show up because that's exactly that idea of that balance is there and i talk about that even in the book i talk about this idea of like yeah. reset, setting clear expectations and like what are the goals and at the same time i'm while you're reaching those goals i'm going to be there for you i'm going to be there to support you i'm going to be there to listen to you exactly. but the goals are still there and they have to get done right so no matter what and i i yes it is interesting how folks just think of it it's like it has to be like mutually exclusive and it's like no they are very much along oh yeah i used right. to have um, more than five years ago so before um, being an empathetic leader was something that people really understood or being emotionally intelligent I would have people say well you're just a pushover and I would have to respond and say well no that's not true just because I slow down and take the time to understand my employees perspective that doesn't mean I don't hold them accountable it doesn't mean they can show up to work anytime it doesn't mean that they can't complete their goals or their tasks all of that has to happen but that doesn't mean I, I I don't treat them with respect. I can still be kind. I can still be caring, but I can also be firm. Exactly. I think, and again, just knowing that they don't have to exist in two different vacuums is, and, and um, I know I get the same thing. Oh my goodness. Cause you know, the work I put out, it's all about empathy yes. and caring and compassion. Yes. And yeah. like, oh my gosh, there she goes again. And it's like, yeah, yeah. But again, like I can tell you this, my team, <laughs> yeah, it's like, I can tell you, yeah. the team me, they will go yeah. to the nth degree. Cause the, plus the difference, I think it's easier for, for your team members to build in, to uh, buy into that, that, um, that vision, that value system, that normative system. It's easier for your team to buy into that when they see you doing it and living it out. Of course, you have to live Absolutely. It out about it. Then it's like, you know what? If I have to stay later one day or I have to do this thing around this, whatever it is, like they'll do it because of that. Now, if I was someone who was a total jerk, 
they're going to be a lot less likely to be flexible with why would you know, why would they do it what's yeah yeah exactly unless it's, unless it's out of fear which like i mean who right that fear-based leadership no out that's out <laughs> short-lived very short-lived yes. right? <laughs> uh, okay so now that everybody's here uh, hearing how wonderful you are i want you to also tell them like about a time when you maybe weren't the best leader you weren't as compassionate or caring maybe you weren't sympathetic what did that look like specifically um, as a story? And, and then what did you do to come out of it from there? Yeah, um, I was thinking about this and actually this just happened to me last week. You know, so we're sitting here having a conversation about how I'm a servant leader and an empathetic leader, but I actually had a situation last week. Um, I had an employee towards the end of my day and it had been one of those days where it was just nonstop. And so I never had a chance to really compartmentalize everything and put things in my brain and in my heart where they needed to be. And so I, um, I walked by an employee and I could see on her face that she was upset about something. And so I went and talked to her and we had a difficult conversation that was one of those conversations that you knew it was time to end in the moment that she would follow up later because the other person just needed some time. So right when I turned around, um, from ending that conversation, another employee came up to me and said um, something like she felt like people had been avoiding her for the day and that I had seen her twice as I was walking by and that I didn't even wave at her and which I always try, I always, always, always try to acknowledge people. And I did it that day because I was in my head. And so in that moment, my natural tendency would be to say, oh my gosh, let's have a quick conversation. So like, what, what support do you need? What's going on that you're feeling this? but I was still in the conversation behind me. And mm -hmm. so I, um, I, I got a little defensive with her. It still was within appropriate realms, but where I was like, I am really sorry, but I have been so busy today. And so I got defensive, I think, and I reacted mm -hmm. versus just stopping and taking a breath and saying, you know, like giving myself that minute and he, or even being open and honest and, and saying like, hey, I really wanna hear what you have to say give me a minute to use the restroom or grab a drink of water. And then I'm going to come back to you something to where I could reset mm -hmm. myself. I yes. didn't do that. Instead I reacted and I was still in my head and not even five minutes after I responded to her, I was back in that place where I could hear what she was saying. And so I went back and found her. So I at least recovered, yes. but I try so hard. I think I, I heard this probably 10 or 15 years ago. And it's something that has stuck with me um, for my career since then is that when you're in a leadership position and an employee comes to talk to you, very often it's taken that employee the entire day to work up the courage to come and talk to you or even sometimes longer than that day. So when you shut them down, if you don't have time for them or you react the way that I reacted, they might never come back to you again because you shut them down. And so I try to always live with that in mind, and I, I didn't last week, but we were able to reconnect and recover and everything was fine, but it was a point where I was not the best leader. Oh, that's interesting. I, uh, there's <clears throat> Ethan Mann, he's in my book, and he and I only have one line, but the line was really powerful, I think, from what he said, and it was literally this idea of you only get one opportunity to like basically to support a person in the moment, in a right. moment that's happening, and sometimes that is the only moment we'll ever get. Exactly. And so I love your idea of like, and you know, and I never thought about it this way. So for those who are listening, you know, this idea of like, it takes people a lot to come to you. Mm -hmm. And when they finally do, you, you got to be prepared to be present. And part of that kind of goes back to what you're talking about, Mickey, which is, you know, have you taken care of yourself first? We talk a lot right. so much about self-grace, self-compassion, self-care uh, on this show. Um, and just knowing like, have you properly cared for you? And even if it's, you've cared for you, like you said, I'm going to the restroom, that gives you like a three yeah. minute segue to reset. gather my thoughts yeah. exactly but it would be hard I can see how you can be in that moment you know and turning around and I would do the same thing and I teach on this stuff speak on this stuff right like it's like I'm like the expert in this and I turn around yeah. like what the you know and then they're like oh. yeah exactly it could come off yeah. really not great um especially yeah. I'm, saying is that I'm not as great at, at home as I am at work it's unfortunate oh absolutely right yeah so if absolutely. that situation would happen to me I'd be like, wait a second, like, wait, like, you gotta have to wait because, like, I just came from that. So, like, to, or I'd say, like, one person, I have some four kids. So, it'd be like all of them talking, and I'm like, okay, just so you know, I'm completely bogged out right now. <laughs> My brain is not with you. Give me a yeah. minute. Yes. Give me a minute and then do it one at a time. Yeah. They're all coming at me. I'm not gonna hear any of you and right. I can't meet anybody. So, you know, it's that exactly. kind of thing, you know? Exactly. Like, oh yeah. my gosh. <laughs> That's a hard thing. And, it, you know, it's, it is, it's hard for that leader with heart, for that caring leader. It's, 
it's a, it's a hard road. People are like, oh, you know, when you say these things, it sounds so exhausting. And I say, it is exhausting. Like it, it's, both, it's both exhausting and energizing because mm -hmm. as I'm doing it and I'm doing it a lot, I can feel like at the end of the day, maybe a little drained, but at the same time, I'm also seeing how uplifted they are and how much hope they're given by somebody who listened to they, them and cared about them enough to give them that time. So it inspires me to go, oh, like this is so worth being the person who okay. puts it all out there, who listens intently, who leans in so deeply. I will never change to be that person because I think that's the person that the world needs, right? So that while I agree. you're doing it, you go, oh. but like sometimes in the moment you're like, oh, this is awesome. <laughs> I have to like listen to yes. one more person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's just right. the HR. Well, but yeah, right. Like that, that's our role. But I think of it too, I try to compare it to other things. Like if I was training for a marathon, Yes, that's exhausting, but I would keep putting the work in every day to get to my end goal. And so if you if you go in and you think about like, why am I, what, what is my why? Why am I doing this? I'm doing this to take care of people and build leaders for tomorrow. So it's worth that workout, you know, every day, even yeah. some days are, you know, exhausting. And the, when you see the person two weeks later and the advice you've given them has helped and now they're doing what they need to do or taking off in their career, whatever it is, uh, or even years later, I'm sure you're, you're the same way where you'll get messages from people years later telling you that that one conversation you had was the turning point for them that it makes it worth it oh my gosh the other day I was um I'd just come up from a conference but well I was at a conference it was the last day and we were and, you know we're all eating breakfast in, at the conference and I was standing there and I saw someone I'm like oh oh I know you're Camilla's mama you're you're you know I just said her name and then uh -huh. she said are you Heather so here's the backstory. Um, on the way from the airport, like at the airport, we all we, we were looking at like, are you gonna get Uber? And it was two people, one person that was on this board, this other board I'm on, and then um, and then there's this like young, like a young lady, maybe early 20s. And and so we all get in this Uber together. And when we get out, you know, I'm walking with the three of them, and I'm we're going up this area and we're going to check in. And okay, so that's not check-in. So then she follows me to the front desk and, and then she says, Oh, I found my roommate. I said, Great. Well, I just thought I was just like going with the group or like yeah. walking with people didn't sound like anything out of the ordinary well her mom says at that breakfast station oh my gosh are you heather because my daughter on she was oh my gosh i'm gonna get teary-eyed she like almost starts crying she was my daughter just she was like oh my gosh i met this woman she was so amazing and she cared for me and i felt like she was like my second mom and she was like take care of me and i'm like and i'm like really like i would just be me but it's that idea that idea mm -hmm. the idea we're studying yep. of what you know what can we do it like in mm -hmm. the moment when people are like they, they might look to you they don't even you don't even realize they're looking to you for to, to, to guide them to, to, to somehow to be there exactly and, and then you choose whether you are or you aren't exactly and moment, i just thought i was just doing what i always do right. i guess i was choosing it but i didn't feel like i was fully in it like i could have been not like i was following right. her you know, right. she was a baby yeah <laughs> but exactly. in her mind i left her feeling this way of like feeling i've left her feeling cared for I'm like cared wow, for exactly amazing right to yeah. do that and to kind of embody what you talk about so um it was good it was a good day uh, so then the, for those who are listening like you know how many how many do you have more good days than bad do you have are you are you finding yourself evaluating yourself for not meeting people in their steps in their shoes where they're at in the moment are you are you feeling like you're you know falling short or do you say i get i get like an a minus like i get an a for this i'm doing really well those are just some things to be considering um so i am curious for those who are listening right now if you had to leave, leave. let's say it's leaders who are struggling, those, just leaders in a journey, leaders who want a little extra oomph to get through the week, what might be a couple pearls of wisdom that you would leave them with today? Yeah, you know, I, I, I have a lot of them, so I'm getting on there down to, to some. I think um, the first, the one that has worked for me really well and I think works for successful leaders I know is to figure out what your values are and live by those values. Um, and that means, you know, in your career where you're getting paid, that means if you're an entrepreneur, that means with extra things that you're taking on, make sure that everything you're doing is true to who you are. So for me, um, I am somebody that really works hard to live with integrity. I'm all about collaboration and community. Um, and so if something doesn't feel like that to me, to, to be able to step back and say, this doesn't feel right. So that way I'm not putting all of my energy into something that's kind of tearing me down versus building me up. Um, I think for leaders, leadership is extremely lonely if you let it be, especially for new leaders, because you think I'm a leader now, I'm supposed to figure this out myself. 
Um, and it's not true. None of us have it all figured out. And all of us that are actually successful and keep smiles on our face and get A's and B's each day, if we're grading ourselves, all of us have a support network. Um, sometimes it's people that you see other, every day. Some people, sometimes it's people, like I have some people that I've never met in person, but that I talk to online and that support me in specific areas that are experts in diversity, equity, inclusion, or in compassionate leadership that I'll reach out to when I have a specific problem. Um, but so, so building that support network and allowing yourself to ask for help, I think is really critical. Um, and then the last one I think is to not be afraid to quit. And what I mean by that is don't, you know, there's, there's so much, um, so much negative connotation for quitters, right? Quitters don't win. It's only the people that keep going that win. Um, and that's not really true. It's more about trying. So if, if you're doing something and it's not working, don't be afraid to stop and reassess and either start something new or tweak it and start over. I think all of us um, who are like Heather and me that not only have two things that we're balancing, we're probably five or six or 10 things that we're balancing at a time. We've all tried things that just don't work and that's okay. It's okay to try and to fail. And actually when you fail, that's when you grow the most. Um, and for me, I, I grew up really as a perfectionist, not knowing that I was one. So to, um, to allow myself to make mistakes and allow myself to quit has been something that's been really powerful for me. And I've seen myself grow as a leader and just as a person since I've allowed that. Oh, I love that idea. So it's kind of like, um, it's not quitting forever. It's maybe putting no. on the angle of this process, the angle yes. of this idea, but it's starting fresh with the new angle of that idea or that yes. process. And so that you don't, you're not like quitting forever. You're not a loser. Right. 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 It's not, you're not just done and you're never doing, you know, but, but to say like, this is not working, you know, whether it's a job that you found a job and it's not true. It's not what you thought it was going to be. It's okay to stop and reassess what you want and try something else. And so I think it's more about the learning after the failure um, and the action you take after it more than the quitting or, or the failure itself. Mm, I love that. So for, so for those who are listening, the, the, the biggest things were being congruent and authentic, uh, yeah. having that support system in place. And then of course, again, iterating and knowing that like being flexible, that change is okay. And that stopping and starting is kind of expected in life or it's on a journey, a journey has signs and pause signs and yield signs, right? So yes. I think that's really, I love that. I love, really love that message. For anybody who's um, really, who's listened, received a lot of value here, please do um, make sure that you refer it far and wide. Just like send it, you know, send it out to all your friends, send it out on social media, and don't forget to go write that review on Apple uh, Apple Podcasts because that's really where we we're able to move this up on the algorithm so other people will listen. I think actually I did hear that we've moved up like 44 spots just recently, which is kind of what? exciting. I hasn't even been tracking it, and I'm like, what happened? Ah. It's the content, it's the content. Yeah, it's um, content. So I think that's great. You know, Mickey, this has been great. I'm just I I feel really okay. really um warm, warm and embrace that you're on here with me. So it's, it's been great. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. This has been really fun and I can't wait to hear it. And I'm going to send it out to everybody and have everybody subscribe so that we can continue to grow and learn from you. Oh, awesome. Well, I love learning from you and, and all the other guests too. It's amazing. Listen, everybody, thanks for joining and just go be your, your best self today. Okay. Be well. <laughs>